like they uh, breakfast burritos and they are ham and muffins. But we're making a left here. This thing is to the left of us. Hop on 70 miles per hour, I believe, is the speed limit. As long as we're not doing construction. A lot of people that watch my videos think I'm an OTR driver. Guys, I haven't did OTR work since, let me think, December of, December of 2016 was my last time uh, being an OTR driver. As y'all know, I was working for Roadrunner or Big Rock, whichever one you want to call them, or Sergeant. They got a lot of names. January of 2017, I started doing local work for Great White. I did that up until I got fired for uh, paper laws or whatever. But then I came out to the oil field and started doing local work here in Texas and New Mexico. And uh, pretty much I just I drive short distances. Uh, the most miles I think I went in a single trip was probably like 100 and Maybe 160 miles is probably the longest. But uh, I, I'm a local driver, guys. Now, a lot of people don't know what local means. A lot of people think local means in order to be a local driver, you have to go home every night or um, not be in a truck after um, 11 hours of driving or how many hours you guys drive. And that's not the case. You know, I could... Uh, I could be living in Memphis, Tennessee, and I could find me a job up in, uh, let's say, Ohio. It could be a local gig, you know, I could be just going five miles. I could just work, you know, 10 hours a day, and then I'm off. I could even drive a local truck. And just because I don't have a place up in Ohio don't mean I'm not a local driver. I could either sleep in the truck, or I can go get a hotel, or I could just move. I could buy a house up there. But in this case, I'm a local driver out here in the oil field. Like I said, I've been doing local work for, uh, it's been a year now I've been doing local work. And uh, pay is pretty good. Uh, this is the most money I have ever made, which is working out here in the oil field, of course. A lot of people want to know why I work in, why, why do I work in the oil field. They've been told that, um, you know, OTR is booming. I'm hearing OTR drivers are making a killing. That's what uh, one of you guys told me in the comment section on the YouTube video. And uh, I actually started to pull up at the pilot, and that's the OTR drivers that they making a killing, you know, because uh, that would imply that everybody has swell for night and prime. That's a couple of drivers making a killing. I don't know what a killing means. Last time I checked, all them guys are averaging like a thousand dollars a week. Uh, so man, you can still do a thousand dollars as an OTR driver. You know, OTR is a lot different from when I was OTR at night. You know, night when I was working at night, night didn't have cameras in the truck. They didn't have all the restrictions that they did that they do now. They didn't have uh, all the law book restrictions. They didn't have it, man. They had. They had PC time to where you can actually go to Walmart, come back on PC, or you could be at the truck stop and PC over to the ship or without storing your clock. It's just a lot of restrictions that they got now that they didn't have when I was working as an OTR driver. But uh, now that I'm out in the oil field, you know, things change. You know, my trucks are ungoverned. Uh, there's nobody I got to talk to. I don't have. People calling me every day, want to know uh, uh, why Jimmy or Bob and called in talking about I was doing something unsafe in the truck or why they see me on YouTube or I don't got any of them problems no more because nobody in the oil field gives a damn, you know. Who cares if I'm on YouTube? No one gives a damn out here in the oil field. Versus if I was with a mega carrier, they probably pull me in and you know, sit me in front of some suit and tie guy and close the door and you gotta have some type of meeting and you gotta talk about YouTube and all this horse shit. I just don't got them problems no more. But uh, we 
should be getting off on the interstate here in a second. Like I said, this is a short run. It's only going about 12 to 17 miles. I don't remember the miles exactly. That's why I keep giving y'all the 12 to 17 mile range. But I actually think the exit is right here. I believe so. Yep, this is the exit. So I'm going to basically take y'all to the well and then we will cut the video short. Uh, I haven't actually had time to uh, film on location at the well to kind of show y'all how everything works. Mainly because of, um, it's mainly because all of our trucks are at the well and there's so many logos and all that crap that I just don't film y'all. Uh, it'd be too hard for me to make a video. I gotta censor so much stuff out because, um, you know, a lot of people think because I'm on YouTube, I got some type of special job or special opportunity. They think that the company I work with is some type of special company that I guess only YouTubers can work at. Or I don't know what they think, but they think I got something special going on to where only I'm making six figures. And it's just not the case. You know, a lot of people know what company I'm working, I work at now. I don't know how they found out exactly, but I'll be seeing it in comment section sometimes and uh, once you figure out the company I work with you'll figure out that it ain't nothing special about the company it's just a company that's got a logo on the side of the door and they just work in the oil field there's nothing special about them you know there's no different from any other other companies out here except for the pay you know they pay their drivers more than 1500 a week some companies don't you know some companies don't We should be taking this particular road for about seven miles, and then the location should be on the left. A lot of people want to know how do we find the wheels at night. As y'all can see, there's no um, there's no street lights out here. The poles to the left are just, I guess, telephone poles or whatever. I don't, I don't know what they're for. But, uh, how we find the well is once we find the lease road that we got to turn on. I go to my phone, I go to Google Maps, and I just drop a pin right there at the entrance. And I save it to where anytime I need to get back to this location, I can just plug in that pin on Google Maps and get directions to the pin. And that way, I'll always know where to turn, no matter how dark it is at night. It's going to always tell me, you know, on the mile, you need to be getting ready to turn left or right. So that's how I find the locations. Peterbilt's are definitely one of the best trucks I done drove. I done drove Peterbilt, Freightliner, International, and Volvo. Uh, I like the Peterbilt first. Then I like the International. And then I'll go with the Freightliner. The Volvo, uh, I don't really like. I don't really like anything about the Volvos. I, I don't really like Volvo as a company. I think they screwed a lot of drivers. I think they got over on a lot of drivers. You know, a lot of drivers bought their damn uh, was the Volvo 780 simply because they had a table in it. And I just think they just ripped off a lot of drivers. I know so many people that bought their Volvo 780 simply because they was fascinated with a damn table. And uh, yeah, I, I just don't like it. I mean, it was genius on Volvo's part to make a truck with a damn table in it, but. I mean, drivers was dishing out hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, 120,000, 140,000, 160,000. And I mean, damn, over a damn table in a truck. Just not my type of thing. It's just, just not what I do, you know. Um, I don't even like the top bunk anyway, so. I 
you'll find in the oil field is you'll find almost every single drive out here in the oil field does a speed limit. And the speed limit is 75 to 80 miles per hour usually. So a lot of drivers out here are, are speed demons, I guess you could say, you know. I ain't really noticed a company that was going too slow or, or 55 or 62 or 65. I don't know if other companies actually got governed trucks. I have no idea. Uh, I never asked. I never really noticed. I'm not saying that companies don't got governed trucks. It's just I, I don't really notice them if they do. Um, I know some owner operators probably want to know about the fuel bill driving this fast. Well, they actually expect the truck to go this fast, so the fuel bill is pretty much the same as, you know, the mega carriers is driving the 55, 65 miles per hour. It's pretty much the same fuel bill. Every time I fuel up, I try to get the receipt just to see, and the fuel bill is just really no difference, you know, no difference at all. Now, because I got a blow on the truck, and of course the blower uses the turbo, the fuel bill is going to be a little bit higher than an OTR driver, but that's because you got the uh, blow on the truck that uh, uses a turbo that pretty much takes a lot of diesel, if that's how it works right, because I'm not an expert on that subject. I believe tomorrow I should be getting my microphone, I gotta go pick it up. Uh, I ordered it up to a Walmart here in uh, Texas, so I gotta go pick that up, and then I can do driving videos and talk at the same time. I don't gotta, I don't gotta do the voiceover, you know. Although it probably sounds like I'm actually driving and talking, it's just a voiceover. particular load like I said it it pays um it pays four hundred and seventy seven dollars I get twenty five percent of that which is about uh I don't know how to do the calculations it's about a hundred and maybe fifteen hundred and seventeen dollars somewhere right in there I don't know I didn't calculate it I didn't calculate it I know a lot of people been asking me when am I going to get a thirty percent a lot of y'all don't know this, but when I was on Sandbots, um, when I quit Sandbots, I was at, I was actually at 30% when I quit Sandbots and moved over to Pneumatic. And uh, of course my pay dropped down to 25%, um, which still pays me more than Pneumatic. I think the turn is right here to the left. At nighttime, you can't miss this because it's not lit up. You know, you don't even see this road at night. All you see is pitch black dark. animals on the inside, mostly just cows, that you can't see at night. You don't see the cows at night, just try not to hit them. They're not really a problem out here in the oil field at all. Not really a problem at all. They don't really come towards you if they see you. Now the lease roads on the new Maddox side, I noticed the lease roads are a lot smoother than they were on the uh, Sandbot side. You know, on these roads, I could probably do like 30, 40, 50 miles per hour. It's not really a bad road, don't really tear up your truck. But on the Sandbot side, man, these roads was horrible, real bad. taking this lease road for about mm, maybe five miles we'll be coming up to uh, the well site that's why I'll be cutting the video and tomorrow I will try if I can I'm gonna try to do a video on the well site to kind of show y'all how how we do the uh, pneumatic side I know there's a lot of drivers oh my god they'll tell you how hard this damn pneumatic stuff is and how much they hate it and how hard plugging holes is and, and just a whole lot of BS. 
I'm going to do a video and, and hopefully I can show y'all just how easy it is. Now, I'm not saying when you get out here, it's going to be as easy as I make it look, okay? Because I've been, I've been training at it for almost, what, it's going to be two months in February, so I got two months of uh, experience with it, you know? I'm not saying I'm I'm some type of expert, I'm just saying, I'm going to show you how easy it is on my end. That video probably won't come out tomorrow, matter of fact, because it, it depends how hard it is for me to edit the video. Logos and just all kinds of crap. But like I said, a lot of people think I got something special going on. They think because I'm on YouTube, I get all this damn referral money for talking about companies. You know, a whole lot of BS. Now, I know I don't got any nighttime videos, and that's because the camera don't pick up in the dark. So, until I get a camera that can pick up in the dark, all of my videos are daytime, and I only got a certain amount of time I can shoot them, which is pretty much from 8 a.m. to like 5 p.m., you know, so that's why y'all don't see me working at night. The only thing I can show y'all is daytime videos. Yeah, it was one in it was one point in time where you guys I think I think that was like uh two or three weeks where the only thing y'all saw me doing on YouTube was just being broke down. And a lot of people was talking about, hey Andrew, don't you think it would be worth it if you like go to Brady or, or go to Swag and Wagon or eighteen forty five or any of them other companies, don't you think it'd be worth it to take a pay cut just so you can get some working equipment? Yeah, I, I, you know, I laugh. I laugh at it because uh, uh, I don't know what y'all be thinking with these breakdowns. I, I don't know how long y'all think I'd be broke down for. I don't know if y'all think I, I spend a night in the hotel for weeks upon weeks or if y'all think a flat tire takes days upon days to fit or if y'all think when the turbo went out that I lost some money. I don't know if y'all didn't know I was going home. The turbo went out. It didn't matter because... Yeah, I was already going home, you know. <laughs> the only thing I lost was instead of picking up my rental car that morning, I had to pick it up later on that night. That's that's the only thing it cost me. Well, it didn't cost me anything. It's just time, I guess, you know. That was it. it. just cost me time. Here, look, I came back. The truck still wasn't ready. Did it cost me any money? No, I just picked up another truck in the yard. That's working perfectly. So... A lot of y'all get confused on the breakdowns. Y'all think I should take a, a massive pay cut. And I know that's how a lot of truck drivers think. They think pay cuts are good for whatever reason. I think pay cuts are horrible. I would never, ever be thinking about taking a damn pay cut in anything. That, that would never cross my mind. But it crossed a lot of y'all minds. I don't know why y'all need to reprogram y'all selves. It's that suit and tie mentality. Suit and tie guys thinking... Got y'all thinking that um, I guess pay cuts are awesome or something. I don't know. Just, I don't look forward to no damn pay cut. Pay cut never made sense to me. Well, we're getting close to the location, so I'm gonna let y'all go. There's not really much to uh, see. Nothing really much more to explain. Make sure when you come out to the oil fields and you see bumps in the road like this that you slow all the way down because man if you go over this bump these pipes at a high speed you will break everything in your truck that's loose i know i i know i did it hey look here i have done it for real in real life i hit a i hit a pipe like that I was probably going like 30, 40 miles per hour. I mean, everything in the bunk fell apart. The microwave, the TV, the laptop, all, it was all coming down on top of my head. You don't want that to happen to y'all. I'm out.